Hello students, welcome to EPG Path Shala. I am Dr. Renu Tyagi from Sadar Patel Institute, Ahmedabad. Today we are going to talk about the module Body Composition and Athletes from the paper Physiology and Sports Anthropology. Now let's see the learning objectives of this module. After finishing this module, we will be able to understand the need of body composition for athletes to comprehend the requirement of different body composition for different athletic activity, to learn about the importance of the nutrition and training in athletics, and to understand the role of weight and size in any sports and activity. Body composition, which is the proportion of the lean mass, fat-free mass and depot fat is one of the most morphological feature characterizing a human organism. The relative proportion of these components are dramatically dependent on the development level with a difference in males and females through much of the lifespan and thus are of great interest to those working in human growth and development. The significant interaction between energy turnover and body composition is closely related to the functional capacities of the organism. Hence, body composition is of considerable importance to physical fitness evaluation. The body composition is an important concern related to the performance in athletics. Athletes are in news today. The former strive for the increased muscle mass and lesser fat mass and the latter must contend with the catabolic effect of the weightlessness. Both are held in high esteem and today the adulation of the young who aspire to athletic prowess has been intensified by the large income that some athletes now enjoy. More women are engaged in athletics than ever. Before there are several journals devoted to exercise physiology and sports medicine and the sports section of the daily newspaper have expanded. Do athletes differ from the non-athletes in body composition? Do various athletic types differ in the body composition? Certain prerequisites must be met before these questions can be answered. It is known that body composition differ between the gender, that it is altered by the age both in the child and in the adult. Body composition provides an excellent opportunity to partition the gross size of an individual into two major structural component. Body composition of adult man differ from a adult woman. The man is generally taller, heavier, and have a large muscle mass as compared to the women. He possesses less total fat, has larger bone width and circumference size and has a heavier skeletal mass as compared to their female counterparts. Differences in the body composition are also pronounced when comparisons are made between sports participants of the same sex such as the Olympic competition track and the field specialist, wrestlers and football players. Athletes often want to know the ideal body weight or the body composition for their best performance implying the existence of some universal optimal combination of body fat mass and the fat free mass. 
when there is no such thing exist so it becomes difficult to even define the ideal relative fat mass and fat free mass for a particular or for a particular sports as all aspects of physique plus many other factors contribute to the successful performance recommendation for athletes body weight and body composition also based on the average body fat percentage and fat free mass values obtained from the representative athletes in a given sports activity let's have a look at the body composition characteristics of athlete athletic requires a different body composition than a normal person for every athletic activity there is a different body composition required it is evident that wide array of functional tasks are required in sports has influenced the type of physique and body composition characteristics observed across sports group particularly at the champion performer level because of the importance of body composition to performance it is not astonishing that there is a sport specific body composition profiles among various athletic groups undoubtedly the unique physical characteristics of champion performer even in various sports group results largely from lengthy selection process it's also important to recognize that there is considerable variability among elite performer within specific athletic group for example certain sports particularly team sports in which specialized tasks are performed for example football and cricket requires a wide variety of physique characteristics to perform unique team function therefore the use of sport specific body composition profiles to estimate a target weight for optimal performance must be considered in the context of specific physical demands or functional task required in the sports two assumptions are required for the use of body composition profile data to estimate the optimal weight for athletic performance number 1 the range of relative body fatness of the reference group is considered to be the most favorable for the physiologic and biochemical requirement of the sport and number 2 these characteristics adequately reflect those of the most superior athletes in the sports individual differences in body structure and other factors may alter to some extent the optimal performance body weight and composition on an individual basis there is some concern about either suggesting or imposing weight or body composition standards because this may introduce pressure on the athlete to engage in unhealthy practices to achieve perhaps unreasonable goal This may be particularly troublesome in female athlete as there appears to be an increased incidence of eating disorder amenorrhea and associated premenopausal osteoporosis hence it is recommended that individual goals be established and that a range of body composition values be used in developing target weight for athlete in various sports rather than attempting to get all athletes to a singular goal in general the athletic population whether adolescent or adult is lean with some of the lowest fat percent values found in the body composition literature most athletic groups are about lower in the fat percentage compared with their non athletic counterparts although the gender specific differences in fat percentage are clearly evident in the athletic population too let's have a look at the physique of champion athlete anthropometric studies have been conducted on different athletes body size and body proportionate studies of olympic champions athletes and athletes have been demonstrative of the physique similarities and dissimilarities individually and collectively both men and women associated with given athletic activities the male distance runner for instance 
the male who are middle and long distance runners have higher caliber the body fat value for both the groups are extremely low out of which about 3% of the total fat is body essential fat this group of athletes is at the lowest end of the lean to fat continuum for top flight athletes body composition is an essential characteristics for success in distance running this is true because the today's requirement is the body's ability to dissipate the metabolic heat during running is of primary importance in maintaining thermal balance during competition as we know that excess fat prevents heat dissipation also dead weight the excess fat of the body is added directly to the energy cost of the running which hinders the distance runner who must remain a high level of steady rate aerobic metabolism for a prolonged period of time elite distance runners are smaller in circumferences and bone diameters these characters are inherited so the best distance runner inherit a physique that is slight of build in the term of height and skeletal dimensions when this type of body is blended with a lean body composition highly developed aerobic system and proper psychological attitude for long intensive training and the proper diet certainly exist for a winner as we can see from the table 2 it shows the anthropometric characteristics of the elite male distance runner the average body fat for the distance runner is reportedly 15.2% which is significantly lower than the sedentary females of the same age height and the weight even as compared to other players like collegiate basketball players competitive gymnast swimmers or tennis players female runners have very low amount of body fat as can be seen from this table in fact the average person body fat for those runners is the same as the 15% average annually reported for the males and it is close to the quantity of essential fat proposed by benke in his model of reference women the table 3 represent the data for 11 female athletes the runners average body fat was 15.2% which is considerably lower than the value for the sedentary female which is 26% runners have low average fat value than the competitive gymnast younger distance runner swimmers and the tennis player let's see the football players now the football players are a group of player which have a body fat content that averaged only 10.4% of body weight whereas lean body averaged 81.3 kg but the first detailed study on football player about their body composition analysis demonstrated the inadequacy of determining a player's optimal weight standard based only on height and weight certainly the men were heavy but not fat the heaviest lean men weighed about 118 kg with 17.4% of body fat the player with the least fat was a defensive back with body fat of 3.3% for his weight of 82.3 kg as we can see from this table 4 wrestlers are generally having more body fat than other athletes these players undergo severe training and acute weight loss or weight gain despite of the medical warnings most of the wrestlers lose considerable weight in few days before or on the day of competition this is done with a hope of gaining a competitive advantage to reduce the possibility of injury because of weight loss and dehydration the american college of sports medicine recommended that the weight of each wrestler should be assessed several weeks prior to the competition here table 5 
presents the physical characteristics of school wrestler. The certified wrestlers were assigned to wrestle at one of the 12 different weight categories while the champion wrestlers compete in the state. Except the age and skin folds, there was little difference in the physical characteristics of the certified and champion wrestlers. The champions were considerably leaner than their less successful teammates. Though the difference is small, but the champion wrestlers competed with a heavier lean body weight. This may be contributed greatly to their success in a particular weight loss or weight class. Let's study the effect of exercise on body composition. Keeping in mind that the percentage of fat for an average young adult male should be 12 to 15 percent and that for a young adult female it should be 22 to 25 percent, several conclusions can be made. First, even among athletes, the male-female differences in percentage body fat is maintained. Second, male and female athletes in different sports vary considerably in their percentage body fat from much leaner than average to slightly above average. Third, the percentage body fat values appears to have a direct relationship to the demands of the sport. Athletes in sports where body aesthetics play a part in success like dance, figure skating, bodybuilding and gymnastics tend to have low percentage body fat values. Endurance athletes that is distance runners, cyclists, cross country skiers and triathletes also tend to have a low percentage body fat values. Athletes in predominantly motor skills sports that is basketball, golf and volleyball tends to be about average. The only athletes consistently at or above average percentage body fat values are the field event participants. Athletes and their coaches have great faith in the physical training and exercise as a means of improving athletic performance. It is well known that this can improve the maximum oxygen consumption and endurance. However, the goal of most exercises and training program is to augment lean weight and to reduce the body fat content. There are a number of statements in the literature to the effect that such program can accomplish both of these goals, but what is the evidence for such statements? Study is conducted on tennis players leaves no doubt as to the effect of long continued exercise. Their dominant arms have thicker bones and larger muscles though subcutaneous fat thickness is about the same. A recent study of the overweight men and women showed that a program of exercise did not prevent loss of lean mass as they lost weight on 1200 kilocalorie diet. In point of the fact, those who exercised lost somewhat more weight and more lean body mass than those who took the same diet but did not exercise. Since exercise serves to increase the energy deficit in individuals, given low energy diets, such a finding could have been anticipated. Let's see the influence of nutrition on body composition. Human beings require optimal nutrition to survive and to prevent them from disease and also to maintain the quality of life. Similarly, athletes also require optimal nutrition which can prevent them from injury to combat with illness and also help to maintain the athletic quality of life. While recording changes in body composition because of exercise or training or decreased physical activity, then dietary intake should be taken into consideration as nutrition plays an integral part in athletics which is the booming research in the field of sports nutrition. Dietary and nutritional practices of individual involved in intense training can significantly affect the exercise performance capacity. To optimize the performance, 
athlete should engage in heavy training and they should eat enough calories to offset the energy expenditure. They should consume the proper amount of carbohydrate during normal training and during the heavy training. They should take meals and snacks at appropriate time intervals prior to, during and or following the exercise in order to provide energy as well as to promote the recovery following the exercise. Individuals involved in advanced level of training and athletes should only consider using nutritional supplements that have been found to be an effective and safe means for improving the performance capacity. Let's see the manipulation of size and the body composition status in the athletes. Optimizing the size and body composition for sports is commonly seen on athletes. To this end, certain group of athletes go to great length to manipulate the body size and composition with the specific goal of increasing their chances of success in competition. Athletes who attempt to increase the mass, the typical goal is to increase the muscle mass in hopes of increasing absolute power and strength. In a few cases, like linemen in football and short putter, Simply increasing the absolute size irrespective of the composition may be justifiable. Athletes who attempt to maintain a constant body weight or those who lose weight before completion is because of being lighter during the competition is thought to improve their performance like in distance runners or gymnasts or ski jumpers. They felt a requirement to make the specific body weight class before competition, for example in the sports like wrestling, boxing and weightlifting. And there is an appearance of looking lighter and leaner may influence the official who do the scoring in the sports in the events like dance, figure skating and diving. Strategies used by the athletes frequently to alter their body composition and mass may put them at the risk for certain health issues which may affect the performance, growth and chances of incurring certain diseases. Proper diet and exercise regimen to reduce the body fatness, restricted food and fluid intake, exercise-induced sweat, environmentally-induced sweating, like sitting in steam or hot box or a combination of these are most common methods used by athletes to reduce the weight. Other methods include the use of catharsis that is forced vomiting and lexivitis and diuresis through drugs or diet and exercise combination. All methods of weight loss have the potential to affect the nutritional status physiology and performance of the athlete. Experimental and descriptive studies describe these acute efforts as well as the effects of chronic weight loss either sustained or as weight cycling over a period of months. After acute weight loss, the most immediate effect on body composition and nutritional status are reduction in total body water and body glycogen stores. The report published showed close to a 46% reduction in glycogen concentration in elite wrestlers who reduced the weight by 8% in 3 days. This finding was corroborated by a recent study that reported 54% reduction in glycogen level in biceps brachii in wrestlers who lost approximately 5% of the body weight. The loss of fat-free mass may be related to negative nitrogen balance which might be a transient event when the daily protein intake is inadequate. Reduction up to 17% in the metabolic rate have been observed in collegiate wrestlers who reduced 7% of the body weight. But the reduction in the fat-free mass is paralleled or decreased with it which makes it difficult to determine that whether the suppression of resting metabolism rate was an acute effect of recent food deprivation or a chronic effect due to reduction in the fat free mass. Also, an increase in heart at submaximal work rate has been reported 
after short term weight reduction in collegiate wrestlers in these athletes the reduction in plasma volume undoubtedly contributes to reduce stroke volume during sustained moderate intensity exercise with increasing degree of dehydration the increase in heart rate is not enough to maintain the cardiac output the changes in cardiovascular function is transient because once the athlete rehydrate the heart rate returns to the expected rate for the standard work load now let's have a look at the health risk the heat illnesses including muscle cramps heat exhaustion or heat stroke are most of the common health risk with acute weight loss studies have shown that the effect of dehydration by several means and found increase in the electromyogram activity that might relate to spasm and cramping in the skeletal muscles one study showed that during a period of 2 weeks weight was reduced by 3.7% of the female athlete who participated in a variety of sports experienced reduced phagocytic function and also a reduction in the lymphocyte transformation stimulation regardless of the reduced stimulation the values for the stimulation index after weight loss remained well above those of the control group the rapid weight reduction adversely affects submaximal endurance performance due to reduction in muscle glycogen which appears to impair the muscle's ability to sustain contraction at a set work load for long duration rapid weight loss along with the dehydration will reduce the plasma volume which among other factors will reduce the cardiac output and thermoregulatory capabilities and will promote higher ratings of perceived exertion reduction in the weight regardless of its profound effect on the physiology and energy reserves in muscles has a less clear effect on short duration high intensity performance generally among non athletes high power may be reduced however in athletes who are accustomed to reduced body weight in preparation for the competition single high power bout of exertion are unchanged with weight loss perhaps because of duration of the duration of high intensity effort that require anaerobic metabolism as a main source of energy production gaining weight is a relatively easy and often enjoyable task brought about by imbalancing the energy balance of body in favor of greater caloric intake it poses a unique problem for an athlete which is not easily resolvable in normal life for a person living sedentary life with an excess intake of 3500 kilocalories results in an increase in the body weight by 0.5 kg the weight is increased because the extra calories are stored as body fat for athletes weight gain is in the form of lean body weight specifically muscle mass but this form of weight gain can only be accomplished if an increased caloric intake is accompanied by an appropriate program of muscular work heavy muscular overload or strength training supported by a cautious diet appears to be an effective means to increase muscle mass and strength also if all extra calories consumed were used for the muscle growth during strength training then 2000 to 2500 extra kilocalories from a well balanced diet are required for each 0.5 kg increase in the lean mass one should keep monitoring the body weight and the body weight to verify whether the combination of diet and training is increasing the lean tissue or not now let's summarize what we have learned in this module we have understood that body composition provides an excellent opportunity to partition the gross size of a person into two major structural component in general athletes have physique characteristics unique to their specific sport for instance the field event athletes will have the relatively larger fat free mass and a higher fat percentage while the distance runner 
possess the least amount of lean and fat mass. The elite performers blend unique characteristics and highly developed physiological support system. It is also important to recognize that there is a considerable variability among elite performance within specific athlete group. For an example, in certain sports, particularly team sports in which the specialized tasks are performed for the weight reduction, exercise due to its caloric burning quality is one of the best method. Women have a higher body fat than the men because of necessary biological functions but the female athletes have lesser amount of fat percent as compared to the sedentary females so they can perform best in the competition. A combination of both exercise and diet will help the athlete to give the maximum output. Weight gain in athletes must be in the lean tissues as the mass will decrease the endurance and affect the performance in competition. Thank you.